we do all get we have an April meeting scheduled in Carson City. So. Okay. Let it be noted that uh, Jim is our new representative. Uh, that brings us to item K. Review and possible approval to retain a third council to intervene in uh, uh, NV Energy and share of uh, Pacific Merchant. What this, what, what the issue has become is Nevada Energy and Sierra Pacific are not one company. They are two separate entities that have worked together. They now want to become one company. And what effect will that have on Overton Tower? The construction of the online project from uh, Robinson Summit down to, uh, uh, which is Ely, from Ely down to uh, uh, Tide Silver Hawk there, somewhere close. It went into the Nevada Power Service territory. The, the implications are of that, that we could be un, unintentionally harmed by an increase in our transmission fees and some of the other fees we pay. Um, that, that Right now, our transmission cost is one and a half million a year. That's 1.2, 1.5 million a year. That's a, a large impact to us. The rates being proposed are increase at a minimum double transmission cost. Now, our transmission costs are calculated under the tri-party agreement. So they're, they're calculated separate from everyone else's and we may not be fully impacted by that. But we do need to keep an eye on that and see what's going to happen with those with that filing and should we at some point need to intervene in that case. And we want, while we do not intend at this point to um, have any expenditures Intervention. They have not filed yet, so we don't know when that will be possible. But sometime in June, we're expecting a filing, and once they file and we can see what the filing is, we may need to have an attorney selected and on board to move forward with an intervention. What so is the basis for the increase from what we pay now? In their <coughs> Why are they increasing theirs? Yeah, well, what's the difference of having the two companies first or in the energy as they are now? <coughs> NV Energy as they are now, the transmission facilities in the south are all that's calculated in the transmission rate. And by FERC requirements, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, that's where the, the merger is filed, you cannot charge any more for your transmission service uh, to someone else than it costs you to use your transmission system. So, if all you're dealing with is Southern Nevada's transmission system, that's one issue. But now you intertie the two transmission systems with the online project, and you have all of the transmission facilities in the north blended with all the transmission facilities in the south, and that cost gets then spread over all of the customers. And that's, that's kind of the basic thing that's driving those costs. And if we intervene, what can we do to say we, we, we can object to the We can object to the, uh, the, the, the way it's calculated. We can object to that we receive no benefit from the intertie and should therefore be, be exempted from, uh, from some of that. And, uh, and we have some valid arguments that may, may re reduce or keep our costs from going up. In discussions with Nevada Power, <coughs> without a piece of paper that says exactly what those costs are going to be, it's hard to determine how involved we want to get in, a, in, a, in the rate filing, in the inter, in intervene in the merger. They have implied that we would not be harmed. I'm not sure I'm prepared to just take it at face value that we will not be harmed. And so our goal would be to discuss with uh, uh, FERC level attorneys. In the past, we've used Wright Talisman. Uh, they specialize in FERC filings. That's who we would approach first and discuss with them and bring a, a, uh, a 
some numbers back for what a, a range of costs for an intervention might be and uh, just have them uh, be alerted to look for that filing when it comes to it. So that's if, if they were to merge then possibly this new Robinson Summit to Harry Allen, I think is where it goes, that cost could be uh, put into the new merged company and say, okay, now our transmission costs are not one and a half million, they're not two million because of this yeah. capital investment they've made. That's, uh, that's, that's our concern. Okay, that's our concern. So. And preliminary investigations set that upper limit at, for an intervention somewhere around Forty to fifty thousand. Um, we'd like to do a little more investigation and verify that number and, and uh, bring that back to the board. But what we want is to know to inform the board of, of where we're going and authorizations per, authorization to proceed to uh, find counsel. So would they also attempt to negotiate with the power enter into some contractual relationship? Uh, limiting the potential increase of that that could certainly be come um, that's certainly an option that could be, be placed on the table worst case scenario though if we we uh, could end up paying two million a year 2.4 million versus 1.2 yeah and we're looking to save that up by spending 50 thousand and until and until we actually see their physical filing it's it's, it's very difficult to quantify what the increase may mean to us. So that would be that would be our. Once they filed, we would uh, have you know 30 or 90 days to file an intervention, ask for an extension so we can calculate the the uh, impact to us. They given their basic reasoning to the FERC for uh, the money into company. That will all be given to FERC, and, and the, the rationale obviously is going to be it's, it's beneficial to everybody involved or somehow necessary. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. So, now would that be we would give the management the right to go ahead and pursue that up to $50,000? No, we're asking for authorization to retain for counsel. Okay. So and if the district determines the need to intervene, the issue will be brought before the board for approval, which would be the beginning of expenditure <coughs> of funds. Oh, okay. This, this is just letting us know what's happening. Letting you know and telling me, holding me accountable to have an attorney in place when that intervention takes place. You don't want to be behind looking for an attorney once the filing's made. You want to be preparatory for that. What would be the cost to retain the bird council now? Well, I'll bring that back to you. If we if we tend to expend any money on an attorney, we'll bring that back. We'll just uh, ask uh, if they're willing to monitor that, what the cost will be. So We're anticipating a June filing on that, so we have April, May to, to really tack down that relationship with an attorney. I'm looking for a motion to authorize the manager to retain a FERC counsel for possible intervention in the NV Energy Sierra Pacific merger. Uh, if the district determines the need to intervene, the issue will be brought before the board for approval. I make a motion. I have a motion. I have a second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, I got a question. Where I work for NV Energy, will there be any? Yes. 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 Probably should have said. I can give you my opinion. You're elected to vote. If you feel it's a conflict in that uh, your voting here would either jeopardize your standing or income, uh, then I think you, you can abstain. But you're certainly not required to. It, and I'll turn to the attorney for that. Uh, yeah, it, often when we abstain, it's because there's either impropriety or an appearance of impropriety. Um, it's often more the comfort of the board than it is real conflict. Uh, if you were a stockholder or had uh, grounds to gain, that's a bigger issue than if you were um, an employee, for example. 
but for example, but however, if you're afraid that if you vote on this and it could jeopardize your job, for example, you should definitely abstain under those circumstances as well. Um, no, I'm just wondering if it's ethical to put it in the new system we have relational to in the energy. Uh, again, if, if you feel uh, that it's, it's improper, then you can. Uh, just because you have a relationship with NG and the energy doesn't create the conflict all by itself. But I, I just want to emphasize that your constituents elected you to vote on issues. But if there is an impropriety there, that's a decision you'll have to make. Realistically, the contracts I think you have with them have anything to do with the lines or anything like that. So it's, there's no basis for it. Probably with anything to do with the fact that we couldn't get the I, mean, I, I think you have to do what you can feel comfortable with. Right. Just uh, abstain. Uh, yeah, I think I'll just abstain. Based on what he just said. Okay, uh, any further discussion? Uh, just so, uh, just $50,000. There's no approval to expend any funds. Okay. That's informational that at some point we may be in the cost of that may be up to or approximate or just the end. We should be able to refine that number after we've talked with the attorneys. We've, all all we're doing is giving them permission to detain talk, somebody. Detain to talk to somebody. Okay. So, do we need to reread the statement there? Uh, looking uh, to call for the question. Everyone comfortable to call for the question? Okay. At this point, I'll call for the question. All those in favor of authorizing the manager to retain a FERC council for possible intervention in the NV Energy Sierra Pacific merger. If the district determines the need to intervene, the issue will be brought before the board for approval. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Abstain. Those who abstain. I have what, two abstentions. Okay. Uh, the motion carries.